So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and part four of my addiction, latest addiction videos, um, looking at what I've been working on, particularly around um, War of the Roses, hashtag I blame Martin. Um, as you've seen, if you watch the other parts, I've um, rather rapidly in the space of five or well, now coming to six weeks, built several retinues for War of the Roses, mainly the Stanleys, but also um, Exeter. Uh, there's a couple of other minor lords in there as well. Um, and I've absolutely loved every second of building these things. I've become highly obsessed with it, um, working through the different retinues, what I fancy, um, you know, what the next one will be, um, the composition of forces, all that sort of good stuff. And and not least reading about the history of the war. Um didn't know a huge amount about War of the Roses. I mean the basics obviously. Um but um not real details. So I've been and I would never can claim to be a complete expert on it, but I'm certainly um enjoying reading up on the uh on the well sort of real life version of uh, Game of Thrones really. Um, anyway, latest projects or latest things I've been working on. Um, centerpiece has got to be this bombard. Um, it's a Perry model um, metal, and it's awesome. I was talking about it the other night on Plastic Crack podcast. I was trying to work out how it all went together because all these bits are, are separate. Um, but actually, as Martin pointed out, when I looked into it and when I thought logically. Um, they just laid out one behind the other. I mean, basically, a medieval bombard was massive tube of metal, and then all these wooden bits were just basically there to hold it in place. They banged them into the ground, so it never moved. Once it was positioned, that was it. It was there for the duration. Um, I painted this one up, um, controlled by Burgundians, mainly because they were the most common mercenaries. They were also heavy users of... Um, of gunpowder in this period um, so I thought that would be fun um, yeah I mean it's just great fun to do really so I'm worried I've overdone the um, um, the, the tufts and whatnot around it but I quite like the effect I think it looks really I'm quite pleased with it this thing the mantle um, is separate so I could just take that away if I wanted to um, but I just thought it was, it comes with the model and I thought it was quite a nice feature and I, it gave me the opportunity to put the Burgundian cross on the on the top of it. Um, so there you go, nice model, good fun to do, didn't take long. Um, another centerpiece for the army, not sure how often I'll use it, but it's, it's an impressive beastie, that is for sure. So if you watch the Plastic Crack podcast, you'll have seen a few of the next few models uh, in picture form, at least on that. Um, these are um, a unit of um, knights. I've sort of done them as part of Exeter's, uh, Duke of Exeter's retinue. Um, there's a couple of minor lord standards here. Um, you don't need many knights, any mounted knights in the War of the Roses. Uh, predominantly the battles were fought on foot, um, as they were by the British or by the English, um, mostly through the medieval period. Um, they tended to use the horse purely as a vehicle to deliver them to the battlefield. They would dismount and knock chunks out of each other and then, if it went uh, badly, mount up and run away, or if it went well, um, mount up and try and skewer somebody in the back um, so you don't need that many knights but it, however it feels like you need some and so I'm sort of aiming for the bigger retinues for so for my Exeter um, for my um, Thomas Stanley uh, I'm going to put add a cavalry unit um, my other unit or other, one of my other lords that I'm doing um, Clifford He's going to have more mounted. Um, he's not going to have so many knights because I think he was a border lord. So uh, I'm trying to sort of get some logic in the composition of the armies. Anyway, Exeter was a, a rich, important man. So he would have had probably enough retainers to have had a mounted unit or two if he wanted. 
Um, so this is it. Um, it's a mixed bag of figures. They're all metal. It's the original heavy metal, this unit. Um, there's um, a couple of uh, some Perry figures here, at least a couple of them from earlier period. I mixed them in because I thought it adds a bit of flavour. Uh, armour was expensive. Lords would have um, passed it down their family. Um, so there's a couple in there with uh, uh, from from the Agincourt period. Perry figures, there's um, some front rank figures and there's also some... Um, Oh gosh, what is it? Conqueror um, miniatures. Um, I think that's what it is. Anyway, I'll, if I remember, I'll put it in the in the underneath. So just a nice mixed bag. Um, don't know how often they'll be used, but they're very very effective in Hail Caesar. Um, and I thought I just wanted to do up a unit. So that's them done. So talking of the Stanleys, this is another unit of uh, retinue. Bill and Bo troops for William Stanley. Um, I think when I showed the showcase, I said that I wanted to just to add uh, a Bo and Bill unit to both the Stanley brothers, just to sort of even out their um, sort of troop numbers, I guess. And so that's what I've done. This is obviously uh, Williams. Oh, not obviously, this is Williams um, retinue. Uh, predominantly, in fact. All bar one, I think, are um, Perry plastics. Um, this guy in the middle here, I think he's a he's a Perry metal. Actually, this guy behind is also, I believe, a Perry metal. Um, but other than that, they're all uh, Perry plastics. Um, not much more to say about them. Done them as uh, in Thomas's livery. They're slightly darker colour, but there would have been colour variation in their um, in their livery. Um, Manufacture was done in um, manufacture of any kind of product, cotton or what have any kind of clothing was done um, in literally as a farmhouse industry, and um, different families would have done it in different ways. So um, um, yeah, quite pleased. Another unit down. So this is a unit for um, Thomas um, Stanley. Um, this is one of his retainer lords. This is, uh, I have to remember who it is, uh, Sir Edmund Mountford. Um, that's his colours. Uh, he was one of the retinue knights for, um, for the Stanley family. Uh, so just to put a bit of variety, he, they're, all the troops are predominantly are wearing um, William Stanley's colours. Um, but um, there's a, the knight here and his standard... Um, are from Mountford. Um, again, mostly um, periplastics. Uh, there's a couple of odd metal figures in here. This one, that one, and that one, I think, that I bought uh, off the interweb um, some time ago just to add a bit of spice and variety into the, f into the figures. Again, I love, I've said it many times, I love the flexibility of these peri plastics particularly i think they're just um this i'm not a modeler and yeah i've been really enjoyed putting these things together i uh, really really enjoyed it um so there you go another bill and bow unit done so now some sort of odds and sods counters um i showed last time i think the um, um flower of craven uh, Clifford's mounted longbow unit that I'd done and also the dismounted um, unit to go with them um, and I just thought for fun I'd do a stand to denote their horses uh, where they've been when so dismounted um, much like you would with the dragoons so these are just three peri plastic um, horses with a couple of um, guys from the don't remember which set it was, but I've just done my own little bits of conversion just to turn them into horse holders. Um, doesn't do too much to look too closely at the horses. They all look like they're moving far too fast to be held in, held by two guys um, who are clearly walking. But whatever, it, it's for me, it just is a bit of extra flavour and colour. I've also done another six casualty counters um, based on the um, war bases. Um, counter things. Um, these again are Perry metal casualty counters. I bought four sets of them. I uh, showed off the other six that I'd already done um, because I just think they'll add a bit more. Uh, they'll make the battlefield look a bit nicer when we actually play. 
to have these to put behind the unit rather than a pile of plastic counters. Um, I don't often do it, in fact I very seldom do it. I do have quite a few of these wall based counters but it's the first time I've ever bothered to, to put casualty models on top and um, I think I might do it again for other periods as well because I think it just adds that flavour to it. So that's them done. Um, yeah, not much more to say about this. And finally for now, um, this is a unit of uh, mercenary handgunners. Uh, the front rank metal figures. I showed off uh, previously, I think in the first video, I'd done a unit of, um, of handgunners and I did three bases like this. And then realised that in the rules that we're using, you only use them as a small unit, which is two bases. Um, so I made up the, the other pack I had um, of this nine. So with the other nine I've got, uh, will give me three units of handgunners, which is more than I'm ever going to need. Um, so, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, nice little models, these. I do like the front rank metals. Um, they just paint up so easily. Um, I know some people don't like metals. Um, some people live by plastics, but for me, as a non-modeler, I love metal figures. To me, just brilliant. Nicely sculpted, nicely designed metal figures for me every time. Um, and front rank do some of the best, I think. Uh, certainly they paint up the most effectively. So there you go, another unit completed. So I've also um, picked up uh, via Jim at Reaper Games this um, plastic uh, Renandra um, medieval building. Um, it's available on the Perry uh, website. And I just thought I wanted a bit more... Um, terrain features to put on the table. I think I've got a couple of medieval style buildings but most of what I've got is more from the black powder period so um, this with the discount you get with Reaper Games and particularly if you use the podcast um, discount code this is very very reasonable to buy. Um, so it's the building itself which is just a very straightforward plastic one. All I've done is just uh, sp sprayed it with um, a very dark much darker than I meant to, uh, brown, um, and then I've just successively dry brushed it with lighter browns to build out the colours, and, and I quite like it. Yeah, I mean, it's just a simple plastic building, right? So not much more to say about that. But the building does also come with a series of uh, wattle uh, fencing um, and some sort of wood store outbuilding thing, um, which I think also adds a bit of flavour to it. And I'm not, I'm sort of debating whether I actually make these permanently in place, whether I get a sort of square base for the right sort of size uh, for a sort of uh, built up area in Hail Caesar and just in place these permanently on it. I think I might do, um, or certainly I might do with the fencing um, and then allow the building to be moved around because uh, to get in, it might get in the way of troops otherwise. Anyway, that's something for the future once I've sort of got my head around exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, these again just plastic, um, dead simple, uh, same method as I did with the building. Dark brown over uh, undercoat, um, then just successively built up the uh, the colours on top with um, sort of heavy dry brush really um, of different browns and ultimately I think neck tan on the end, was it sand, I can't remember, um, but uh, one or the other. Um, and the effect is pretty, pretty simple um, and I'm pleased bit more terrain for the table. So there you go, that's my continuing journey into madness uh, with the latest of the War of the Roses um, project figures I've been painting. Um, got some more crossbowmen on the go, there's some more like, I have my, another unit of light cavalry on the go, uh, which I need to get finished off. Don't seem to be excited to do those, I uh, don't know why. Um, and then I think basically my two Stanley um, retinues I think and now I'm going to say are done um, well I think one of these light cavalry units I've got another light cavalry unit which might join one of the, the Stanley retinues um, but I think other than that they're done um, I think next up I'm going to start looking into doing um, uh, a royal uh, sorry, a Yorkist um, retinue um, some lord I'm not quite sure which one yet um, and then at least I've got, so I've got the neutrals as in Stanley who could fight either side. Then I've got a Lancastrian force under Exeter with Trollope backing him up. 
and then I have um, then I would have a Yorkist force as well. Um, just gives me a bit more variety, and frankly, I've got loads more figures to do, and I'm really enjoying doing it. So I think I will do that. So that's my update so far. Apologies, some of these figures you will have seen at least in still form on plastic crack, but um, I thought it was good for those who don't watch the plastic crack, or just so you could see them um, sort of rotating around on a cake stand. <laughs> um, and it's just nice, I like getting them out. It's part of the routine of finishing painting them is to show them off and do a video about them. So there you go, that's what I've been working on. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Um, um, and I hope you're doing well. Um, I hope your projects are going well. I help, hope, um, yeah, I hope you're staying safe in this mad, mad world that we live in. So stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.